The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the July 20th magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there had a fantastic weekend. Hey, if you're a golfer, it's still going on the weekend, right? We've got the uh, final round of the British Open. It's underway. There may be a winner that is... Uh, that is uh, that, that retains the crown of the uh, champion, um, open champion uh, for 2015. That might happen during the show. Otherwise, it uh, looks like there could also be a playoff. I believe the British Open is a uh, four-hole playoff, if I am not mistaken. I'll try to keep you up to speed on that as well as what's going on in the markets out there. Of course, I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here today, and I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Of course, internationally, you can call us at 727-445-1044. This is Magical Monday. Looks like it's a bit of magic for Jordan Spieth. I believe he just uh, sunk a birdie putt, and he is now tied with the uh, leaders out there at 15 under par. I'll do my best to give you the uh, golf commentary out there. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. Let's not forget that. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got the Dow up about 35 points, trading at 18,122. Uh, S&P is up four points. She's trading at uh, 2130, composite up 14 points at 52.24. Russell's back five bucks right now, trading at 1261. Goldilocks back $24, trading at eleven oh seven. Silver's down three pennies, so basically flat for the day. Those, of course, those two have had the wild ride uh, with their movements in the uh, market. Platinum is off 19 bucks. Uh, Light Sweet Crude back 75 cents. Uh, you've got lead the charge here to the upside today. Priceline taking off to the uh, moon up 32 bucks. We'll check that out. Chipotle, that's up 16 bucks. That's inside the gap. Regenerate Pharmaceuticals up 16. Lennox International, that's up 10 bucks. Tesla's up eight. Tesla's into its uh, swing point high on light volume. Nonetheless, if it closes inside that swing point, it'll go test the highs. Maybe take them out. Amazon is up six bucks. LinkedIn's up six to the downside here. Google off six bucks. That's really nothing. An inside day after that uh, huge move on Friday. Whirlpool's off six bucks. Looks like that's coming back into a breakout area. Uh, you've got Affamed. I almost said affirmed, but it's Affamed and V. That's down 20%. Royal Gold off four bucks. Of course, all of, not all, most of the mining equities are in the uh, red today. Some with volume, many with light volume to the uh, downside out there. Again, 877-927-6648. Uh, so where do we want to begin here? Let's begin. Where do we want to begin? That's a really great question. Where should Stevie begin? Let's take a look at our opening range. Let's go see where we're at inside the opening range. Now, the opening range, what I like to refer to as the first 30 minutes of the trading session out here. This is the S&P futures contract. This is the ES mini. And so if we just take a look at the uh, top and bottom, the high and low, doesn't matter what bar it happens at. It doesn't have to be at the 9 a.m. bar or the 9, I'm sorry, the 9.30 bar and the 10 a.m. bar. It's just the high and the low during that first 30 minutes of session. The high was uh, 21.22. The low was uh, 21.17. That 21.17. 17 level that held as support i uh, really price was coming down this little white line going across my screen out here this is a five minute chart you're looking at but the white line coming across my screen out there that happens to be the 120 minute taz market profile that was the old resistance has now become new support out there of course there's a new market profile that appeared but price came down tested that rejected that and now we've seen it uh, move towards the high of the day out at the 21.24 level, also above that 21.22 mark out here. Now, that 21.22 mark had volume out there on that bar of about 39,000 contracts. Uh, you're up and over that level with light volume, volume only being one quarter of what goes on when you analyze any stock, uh, any stock chart, any indice, any anything out there. Nonetheless, price is above that. 
that says price can go higher. Let's go take a look. So that's what is that's what we're looking at just simply on the opening range five minute chart out there that helps to get our feet wet. If we take a look at the 120 minute time frame and look at a couple of different areas here, the horizontal lines going across my screen, those are our horizontal trading range boundary lines. They often act as support or resistance. You can see the area that acted as resistance most recently was 2113. Uh, that acted as resistance for a few hours, five, six, seven, eight hours out there. Then price firmly got above it back around the uh, 2 p.m. time frame between 2 and 4 on July 16th. Price came back, tested it a couple of times out here uh, earlier uh, this uh, on Friday. Uh, about 10 and 12 noon out there. Price was able to hold those levels. Now we've got price headed up to the upper uh, boundary line. That's at the 2126 area. That's my screen says 2125.75. It says 76, but it doesn't trade to that. So uh, expect us to see. Now that would be actually a one to two. A to B equals CD to the upside out here. Uh, that's the A to B equals CD pattern coming off of the lows last week on July the 9th out there. So this could be a fairly decent spot for the market to uh, truly rest, pull back. Uh, the pullback doesn't have to be large, but just simply could be getting to a resting point. That's what the 120 minute time frame chart for the S&P futures contract. That's what that looks like. If we come take a look at our summation index, just to give us an idea as to what's going on, of course, it was the NASDAQ composite, the NDX 100 specifically, that really took off to the moon. Of course, the NASDAQ composite broke through its consolidation. And as we take a look at the price oscillator, believe that I believe that today, uh, at the end of the day, I should say, if the NASDAQ composite were to see 783 or more net declining issues, then we would see the price oscillator get down below the zero mark. You can see the reading on it is 0.85. 0.85 says that the buyers are still in control. In fact, price, in essence, even though we've had price move up here, with regard to advancing decline and issues out here, price just simply moved back to a level of support. Very important that we take a look. Now, it's really important, especially as strong as the NASDAQ has been, as far as the NASDAQ composite, it's very important for us to watch how this zero level here gets handled. In fact, the NDX, in order for it to have in order for it to actually get below its zero line, I have to manually calculate that. I don't have a way of automating that, unfortunately, with this system out here. But I can tell you, you would need 97 of the 100. There's actually more than 100 issues now between Google, I think a couple other, um, at least Google, there's at least 101 issues, if not a few more out there. But you would have needed 97, or you would need 97 net declining issues in order to get that oscillator down below the uh, zero line. So what does that mean? That means if we do see a move down below zero, we should expect the market to actually pull back. This this actually would tie in to that 120-minute time frame chart that we just took a look at inside of the S&P futures. If I take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, really not so bad here. It's price oscillator still above zero. Um, we haven't seen much in the way of price movement, but it does say that under the covers, a little bit of weakness out here. Uh, and so we'll see if it's just going to flirt with that. It certainly has flirted with that 150 uh, line, that 150 line is where you get jet propulsion that uh, it doesn't guarantee but folks it doesn't fail too often we did not get above it we got really right to it price rejected so we're just simply uh slingshotting in between the uh, bullish zero range and that 150 mark out there nothing bearish at this stage of the game for us to hang any of our hats on of course the one indice that has given us the most promise for higher price that actually is the dow it's a price oscillator made a higher high as price was making a higher high back on july 16th uh, as it was above its level of thrust its thrusters that were out there that says that the dow is going to get all the way back to its highs if not take those out and uh, we'll just take things one day at a time sideways move out here inside the dow but the dow is actually the strong dog at this stage of course all three are strong their price oscillators above zero there's nothing weak about that if we take a look at the uh, vix index the volatility index trading out at 1183 of course when this was up at the highs out here at uh what was the uh, price oscillator was are the i'm uh, sorry the uh, vix index was up in the 20 level made that 2005 i made that prediction if i didn't to you it was inside my newsletter and what i uh suggested now i'm not showing you the chart that actually uh, i know i posted it in the den as well not the chart but the actual number and i said the vix index will make it back into the 12 area you're at 1183 right now it wasn't that difficult of a call uh when you take a look at if you just simply trade the screen right and the screen and one of the tools that i use uh, just said once it once it did x y 
would happen out there, and that just simply has come to fruition. Now what happens? Hey, look, you're below the 50-day exponential moving average. That says that you've got plenty of liquidity to go around inside of the marketplace. Speaking of liquidity, if we take a look at what's going on inside the Euro-Japanese yen currency pair out here, really just kind of a sideways-ish move. It has not fallen apart out here. Uh, it has not taken off to the uh, top side either, um, but there's nothing bearish. There's nothing bullish. It's really more of a neutral uh, stance out here. Oh, it looks like Lee Leishman is going to have a putt to uh, take him to 16 under on the 18th hole. I haven't really been watching it, but I did see his shot land on the uh, green, so I'm assuming he is putting for birdie out there. That would be quite the uh, story if he were able to. My, he almost shot. Well, he had a chance yesterday to shoot a 62. I think he turned in a 64 round yesterday, which was a great score out there. Uh, but he had that chance to uh, tie, if not break, the uh, major uh, record out there from a scoring standpoint. Failed to do that, but this would be a nice uh, little prize out there. Hey, I've got my own Claret jug as well. That's what they're playing for. This is Stevie's. This is Stevie's Claret jug right here. This is from back in. I'm a, I'm a golfer. Uh, most certainly. I haven't played much uh, lately, but uh, this is my 2010 uh, club championship uh, trophy, so I know what it's like to uh, play now. Not at their skill level, that's for sure, but at least at my skill level, I know what it, I know what it takes to win. I also know what it takes to uh, fail. I know the uh, nerves that are associated that these guys, uh, well, my nerves were probably on a scale of 1 to 10 at a 1, and I still know on uh, key shots uh, how you really had to, look, it's like anything else in life. That's the cool thing about golf is that because of that ability to uh, focus on what could go wrong, all right, because each of us can do that. Actually, it was the it was part of golf that probably was was most uh, influential on me being able to learn how to control uh, control my mind, control my thoughts, control my focus, um, be able to change your state. Because like if you're coming from a negative state, what are the chances that you're going to hit a good shot out there? It works that way in life too, right? So whether you're making a sales call, whether you're making a trade, whatever it is out there, whatever it is you do in life, you need to learn how to. To come from a good state of mind out there and that's why each of these guys have the routines right you watch them you watch the uh, players out there they've got the routines you should have your routine as well when it comes to making decisions out there in fact don't make them in your mind folks don't make them in your mind. Put it down on paper out there. If you could have, uh, if you're struggling with some decision out there, if you could have solved it in your mind, you would have already. Put it down on paper. Things become much easier. Okay, enough about that. Uh, if we go take a look at, well, see, as long as we're in the currency area here, let's go take a look at the euro versus the U.S. dollar. What do we know about it? Let's go see what it's doing. It's trading down into that uh, swing point. It looks like it's going to test at least the low of May 27th. That would take it down into the dollar eight, one point zero eight one nine level. If it breaks through that, then you've got an A to B equals CD to the downside. Probably takes you into the swing point here from April 13th, somewhere around the 105 to 106 area. And that is what's going on with that currency pair. Right now, we got the Dow's up 27, S&P's up 4, Composite's up 16. Hey, even if you're watching the British Open, give me a call. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back, folks. Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. 
In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 29, S&P's up uh, four. Looks like uh, Jordan Spieth has a uh, has a, a putt for birdie on 17. As you can see, I'm also wearing my Under Armour. Most of you know that he is uh, one of his sponsors or his primary sponsor. If more, I don't think it's his only sponsor. Well, I don't. Under Armour is one of his sponsors out there. He gets paid a, a boatload of money to uh, to wear their product. In my case, I'm also wearing Under Armour, and I pay them a boatload in order to be able to wear their product out there. A slight difference. If we go take a look at uh, what's going on inside the uh, mining area, let's take a look at uh, Goldilocks, see what we have here. Now, those of you that are longtime listeners of the show, this is kind of interesting. You know when you pay attention to this chart out here, this is the uh, chart for both gold priced in uh, euros and dollars. And Stevie has suggested to you that the uh, gold priced in euros is just as important as the uh, chart that is priced in dollars. And one of the areas that I mentioned that you and I should be looking for, for gold to test in euros, was 998.70. Uh, now, we don't need to get uh, exact out here. If I pull this back, which I will... Uh, let me see where that's really coming back into a swing point from September in 2013. Price back in March of 2014 found resistance at that area. And that level was broken uh, with some conviction and price broke out of that little trading range uh, back on, uh, looks like January the 5th, January 6th out here. Went ahead and made a new high priced in euros back on January 23rd. Now, when I say new high, I'm not talking to all time highs. Went and made a high out there. And last night, when uh, the price of uh, gold got slacked in about uh, 
you know, two minutes time, we'll call it out there. It's a little bit less than that, but if you take a look at just simply a minute chart out there, you can see the uh, you can see how you know. Look, I, I can't prove any of this, right? But looks like all the stops got washed out. Looks like it was a washout there. Now, how do you trade it? What does it mean? You know, what's interesting is when we take a look at gold priced in euros. Gold came right back to the area where it had broken out and where we suggested that that could be a buy. So what Goldilocks needs to do is hold that 998.70 area priced in euros. If it fails there, then the next uh, place to look at is that trend line coming off of the 2014 area. to south Actually, the end of December, December 2013. From that uh, trend line, that looks like that's right around the 869-ish area. Of course, our next touch point from a trend is back on November 6th, right around, what is it, 11-something, 11, 11, I think it's 11-something. Uh, 1137 again that's priced in euros out there well, we know about uh, goldilocks priced in dollars it broke through a, a swing point you know there's an a to b equals cd pattern oh jordan he missed that so we still have uh juggernaut uh, it looks like we may have a playoff out here uh, which would be pretty cool um if we do uh, you know nothing like a little bit more golf out at St. Andrews. The 1 to 1 A to B equals CD. That looks like it'll take you down to about 1065.80 out there. My things are very quiet inside the Tiger's Den. Everybody must be doing as I am, has one eye. Uh, oh, Spieth is only at minus 14. He needed that to get to minus 15. Uh, but he does have that uh, easy, somewhat easy, 18th hole out there. Of course, uh, George Spieth going for the third crown of the quad crown out there. Uh, by being able to get the uh, British uh, Open uh, trophy. So we'll see if he can get that clear drug. All right, so that's uh, gold priced in uh, euros, priced in dollars out here. If we uh, take a look at uh, what's going on in silver, that is flat. Now, silver has had a, a nice rebound out here. Silver, if we take a look at the uh, current contract out here, uh, the uh, September contract, we'll see the price had come down and tested the low of December 1st out here. That was at uh, $14.72. Now, the first time down was with some pretty major volume, about 65,000 contracts. That was on July the 7th. Today, much lighter volume. It's testing that area. It's rejecting it. So silver actually is behaving a little bit nicer than uh, Goldilocks is out there. Uh, if uh, yeah, Steve, if you, if you what? If you, what do you get if you connect two lows on the left in gold? Um, hey, Danny in Atlanta, can you can you just restate that again? And then uh, during the break, I'll uh, go ahead and uh, try to uh, try to follow what it is. Uh, speaking with, communicating with one of our denners out there. Um, with regards, so that's what silver. So silver, in essence, has rejected a uh, two swing points. Uh, and it's done it on lighter volume as we speak right now. The closest below 1473. Um, then that says, uh, well, it says a number of things. It probably says you go back and at least test the lows here from July 7th out at uh, 1462. At least that would be one of the things that it would be communicating to both you and I. Dow's up 35, S&P's up 5, Composite is up 18. We'll be right back. Quiet Markets investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN has just announced a brand new morning lineup that is geared specifically for traders in this volatile trader's market. Every morning at 8 a.m., John Logan starts things off with his daily program, The Global Market Pulse. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesavento trades the market during the market open Monday through Friday on Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom O'Brien hosts the Money Masters for the hour, and Basil Chapman hosts his Tiger Technicians Hour at 11 a.m. From 8 a.m. till noon every market day, these traders are with you as they provide up-to-the-second market information so that you can make the most educated and profitable trades possible. The new TFNN morning lineup is happening right now. Tune in to see for yourself what kind of actionable trading discussion they have each morning, Monday through Friday, starting at 8 a.m., live only on Tiger TV at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 37, S&P is up 5, Composite's up 16 on the 18th hole. Uh, Jordan Spieth decided to go ahead and hit it out towards the bleachers on the left-hand side. Of, well, he's on, really, he's on the right-hand side, fairway of uh, number one, just, uh, just beyond the uh, tee box out there. Now, if you've uh, if you've never played, if you're in the Florida area, one of the uh, one of the one of the great uh, Lynx stylish type courses. There's several, but one of them is uh, the new course over at Grand Cypress. Uh, in fact, if uh, you go on to golfnow.com, uh, you can play out there. Sometimes you get some pretty decent uh, tee times in the uh, low 30, 35 bucks or so. And, uh, you know, many of their holes, you can see you've got these fairways that look like they just simply never end. 18 uh, at the uh, new course looks just uh, like uh, what you're looking at here with hole number one and hole number 18 at uh, St. Andrews. And, you know, I mean, you could hit it about as far left as you uh, want out there. So be curious to see this shot here. Uh, Danny in the den was asking me a little bit more about uh, gold. And so here's what I'm going to do because I didn't come. Danny, I apologize. I don't completely understand um, what you are trying to link up here. But let me just take a look at it this way, see if this maybe assists. Here is when, when you and I were looking at the contract, we were looking at the current month's contract out here. This here is a stitched together um, version of a continuous contract. It's more accurate and better than the uh, continuous contract out here. And one of the things that we can see, there's a yellow horizontal line going across my screen. 
And just like you and I were looking at the breakout of gold priced in euros, this in essence is a version of gold priced in dollars and where it broke out. And we're just simply using the uh, top of the uh, swing point high from back in uh, March of 2018, uh, 2008, 2018. We're not just there just yet. Uh, we will be soon enough, right? So in March of 2008, that high is 1107.50. And gold's priced at right now at 1106.90. Now, when gold broke above that level out here, much like, you know, take a look at the New York Stock, I'm not, the uh, NASDAQ composite and so forth, you know, it broke out above that line, just as uh, gold priced in euros did back in November of 2009. Hey, whenever you break a level of resistance, which is what this was, you like to see price actually come back and test the level of support. Now, if you got long on that breakout, you probably didn't like to see that. Oh, he just spun it off the uh, green on 18. Doesn't look like, uh, well, you never know what's going to happen on this next shot. But uh, he needed to hold that uh, green for his best chance on a, at a putt. Now he's got a, a tough uh, uphiller. Uh, you, you can imagine he will not be short when he gets up to that ball and putts it. No reason for him to be short. This is not about money. This is about trying to uh, win the triple crown, so to speak, out there. Of course, it is the quadruple crown that you really want. In the case of uh, gold, that horizontal yellow line at 1107.50 out here, price came back, tested it, got a little bit lower than that back in February of 2010. That's really the line of, that's one of the key lines of demarcation with regard to what gold has done. Now, this is a weekly chart that we're looking at. So even if gold closes below 1107.50 today, does that matter? The answer is no. The question is going to be where does it close on Friday? So prices come back to a key level of support. What happens when you come back to a key level of support if you fail there and price goes up and tries to test it and rejects it and stays underneath it? Now old support has become new resistance. Uh, and that's what we really want to be watching for. Now, in the case of gold, let's assume, let's take a look at both sides of the trade out here. On the bearish side of the uh, trade for uh, gold, if we take a look at the uh, Fibonacci retracements out here, and I'm just showing you the 0.618 retracement here. I'll put in the 0.382 right now. What I'm doing is I'm coming all the way back into the time frame of October of 2008. And so if you go to October of 2008, that's the uh, kind of the grayish line on my screen. All the way up to the highs out here in September of 2011 out of the 1952 area. You can see we're really in between floors out here. So this 1107 area is really very key and very critical for gold to hold. Now, why is it critical? If it fails to hold this level, pretty darn good chance what you're going to see is gold get back to the 996 area. So we'll call it 1000 bucks uh, because that is your 0.786 retracement level. And that's what you're looking at inside of gold. If we go do the same kind of a thing out here with regard to uh, silver, let's go take a look at its chart and see what other lines we can draw on it. This is going to take a few minutes here to populate as it stitches together all of those contracts. Now, because I'm using the stitch together method, I've got a 10-minute delay. Same thing on gold out there. So gold, you know, is trading right around that level that I was referring to. Now, in the case of uh, in the case of silver, if we go back to that 2008 area, just so you can take a look at it. It's around 23 bucks out here, and uh, you know. We didn't, and we're well below that here at $14. So we're not going to even pay attention to that 2008 uh, level out here as we did in gold. What we can do is take a look at retracement. So if we come from the lows in 2008 to the high out here in 2011, is that uh, about 50.29? Was that the uh, number out here? Let me make sure. Was that at uh, 50.92? 50.90? 50. 50.92. 50, so let me just come back over here and change the uh, top of that. I don't know why it didn't do that, but I can just change it like, ooh, that didn't work very well, did it? Oh, that's because I typed in the wrong thing. There we go. That's much better. Okay, so as we take a look at it, let me turn off a couple of lines on this chart out here. And at this stage here, the actual message for Goldilocks at this stage of the game is this, is the following. Let's pull this back. Now, what gold, what silver is doing, it's got this uh, little key reversal session. This is a weekly chart that we're looking at from uh, December 11th. Let's go ahead and draw a line across the bottom of that. The key level for silver to hold is $14.28 out there. That should be 
a level of support. If that level fails, what we should see is you should see silver pull all the way back to the lows back in 2008, which is $9.94 out here. So the real key level, even though on a daily chart you and I were looking at a most recent swing point, what I would suggest to you is the more key level is going to be $14.28. Oh, it looks like did Spieth, yeah, so Spieth is not going to be able to pull it off. Looks like he's going to finish at uh, 14 under par out there, but he... Uh, he certainly gave it his all. So at this stage, we got two in the clubhouse at 15 under. Uh, Flesh, Fleishman and uh, uh, Zach Johnson. So uh, that would make for a good playoff out there. But you've got uh, uh, Oost. Oosthuizen and uh, who well maybe Day I don't know what he's uh, at at this stage of the game that, that may be able to get it up to 15 under as well. Uh, so that's uh, that's my uh, that's my take on what is going on inside of uh, silver as well as uh, gold. If I uh, do the same thing here with light sweet crude trading at 50 bucks out here, let's just go take a look at it. Uh, uh, come on, stitch together here a bit quicker. And uh, Danny in the den, you can let me know if that assisted you at all or if that just uh, formulated one more question for you when we took a look at what was going on inside of uh, gold and silver out here. Um, is there anything new that I can shed light on with regard to uh, light sweet crude? Um, I don't know what that gap is out here on this chart, so I'm not going to use this chart to uh, to do anything. So let's go take a look at some other things. In fact, I had a uh, so a couple of, uh, two emails from a, uh, a a longtime listener out here wanting me to take a look at Domino's Pizza. I believe it is. My apology because I wasn't able to look at the uh, chart that quickly. But it says Steve a buying opportunity six percent pizza sale. Hmm. Something to think about. If we do take a look at what Domino's Pizza is doing, DPZ is a ticker symbol. Looks like they were out with earnings here. Uh, well, I can't actually doesn't say there was earnings. Say something happened on uh, last Friday. And uh, Domino's Pizza went from a high of 115 to a low of 109.57. Did it with substantial volume. For Domino's Pizza, that was 2.2 million shares. Now, what Domino's Pizza also did back on April 23rd was it broke out with 2.4 million shares. So what does that set up inside Domino's Pizza? What it really sets up is a uh, little consolidation. Now, is that consolidation between 106 and uh, the level of 119.73? I don't know. It hasn't tested 106.86, but that's certainly where that breakout occurred. It's got an inside day going today. You know what that means. That means that uh, price is very likely to head um, down to that 106.86 level out there and that is the uh, quick message on domino's pizza dpz being the ticker symbol we mentioned a number of stocks here that were moving uh that are moving today priceline being the number one le uh, dollar mover to the upside 33 bucks to the upside and uh that is inside let me just turn off a couple of things out here well it's above market profiles let me just turn those off as we take a look at it, what we can see here about Priceline, we know Priceline came down back and tested a breakout area on lighter volume. That was on June 29th. That was 700,000 shares. That was being tested against 900,000 shares as well as 2.6 million shares. So not enough uh, energy to be able to bust it to the downside. Now what we see Priceline doing is uh, going ahead and trying to close that gap. The gap is 1257.46, 1257.46, interest session high so far, 1250.95, volume light. 462,000 shares versus the uh, downdraft from May 7th of 2.1 million shares. Nonetheless, it can still close that gap. If it closes above 1257, it ought to go test its highs out here. Those highs being from the uh, trading day of May 4th, and that would be 1280.97, 571,000 shares. Wouldn't release any more information to us until it does that. Expect a test of 1257.46 inside of Priceline, PCLN, is the uh, ticker symbol. Chipotle out here is also inside its gap as well. And the uh, bottom of the uh, gap is the trading day from April 21st. Looks like Chipotle headed towards 689, even Steven. If it can close that level, well, then what Chipotle will do, it's got another gap out here. This was not a three-gap play. Uh, if it can close that gap, this would suggest that price will head to 710, also even 
Kevin Steven. And that is the uh, low from the uh, trading session from February the uh, 3rd out there. And that is ticker symbol CMG Chipotle. Chipotle. Regenerate Pharmaceuticals, that's up nicely today. $16.99 is the uh, price point. It's up by 3%. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. What I meant to do is actually blow up the chart, so let's go do that. That was Hocus Pocus, Domino's Hocus. I don't know what the heck that means out there. But we can see here that Regenerate Pharmaceuticals up with 451,000 shares today. Uh, that's made the 1 to 1.272. A to B equals CD. It has taken out a, a swing point from June 8th. That was resistance. That had a million shares. It's been able to take that out with light volume as well. Let's take a look at a longer-term picture here for Regenerate Pharmaceuticals. I believe at all-time highs. It has a uh, price objective here a 574.46 on its weekly chart. Does that mean it will stop there? No, it does not. 614.09 would be the next number. Ticker symbol there r-e-g-n let's go take a look at annie lennox lennox international l-i-i -I. annie lennox what a, a great voice she has out there and if we take a look at the uh, lennox international not related to annie lennox nonetheless uh, it is trying to take out a swing point from june 8th that had 2.7 million shares you've done about half that volume as we speak right now we're halfway a little bit more than halfway through the uh, trading session out here. Um, where is this headed to? That is an excellent question. This is a weekly. Oh, that was a weekly chart. Shoot, it's got volume. What, am, what the heck am I talking about? We're looking at a weekly chart. Let's go take a look at the daily chart out here. That daily chart, yeah, it's got volume. That daily swing point from June 10th was 1.2 million shares. You've done 1.3 so far. So you've got a small little A to B equals CD to the upside inside of Lenox International. Uh, that small one could turn into something a bit larger out here. That price projection probably has been hit here today. No, it hasn't. 12030 is that number. Looks more like 12397, 12864 becomes its target area l uh e l i i is the uh, ticker symbol uh let's look at a couple things moving to the downside out here whirlpool being the number one mover dollar wise nine dollars and ten cents to the uh, downside out here off five percent uh i don't see what is moving it other than sellers out here volume wise 1.6 million shares now in the case of whirlpool looks like it's on a a to b equals c to the downside it would take you to 152 let's go ahead and turn that off because what we can also see here inside of whirlpool let me get to clean this chart up just a, a tad for you. We can see that Whirlpool is coming back into an area where it had, had broken out. And that was on uh, the trading day. This is a daily chart you and I are looking at. Whoosh. Look at that stance that Dunn has. He's the amateur who was tied for the lead. First two holes certainly unrattled him. Uh, nearly, uh, he, I don't know, I think he nearly hit it to Ireland, I think, on his, uh, on his uh, tee shot on his uh, second hole out there. Uh, but luckily, uh, he just simply was able to only reach the uh, putting surface for the practice green out there. Uh, nonetheless, uh, what a, a great, what a great uh, championship piece had. I think he's about seven or eight under par out there. Leaders are in at minus 15. If we take a look, though, back to Whirlpool, 153.98 is going to be a key level. Now, there's 2.8 million shares there. You're coming back. You're pulling into that level with some light volume. That is a breakout area. If Whirlpool closes below that level, 153.98, expect it to get back and at least test the uh, lows out here from October 2014 in the one. 39 area and that is ticker symbol w h r you may want to take it for a whirl one of these days royal gold r g l d we can go take a look at all the miners but let's just take a look at royal gold for some reason whirlpool came back up on my screen out here apparently it wanted to take me for a whirl when we get back from this break let's actually go take a look at the intraday charts and get a feel for what they what picture they are communicating to you and i steve rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back folks.
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. If you're looking for a great opportunity to diversify your financial portfolio, consider the Principal Protected Market Safe CD from Everbank. They've just released the second running of their five-year Market Safe Power Metal CD, which combines the power of gold, silver, and copper. You get exposure to three valuable metals in one index CD and have the potential to earn up to 45% capped upside payment at maturity if the metals increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should they decrease? No worries. There's zero risk to your deposited principal here, as you still get 100% of it back. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on the CD. Intrigued yet? The August 17th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD. Everbank is a member FDIC. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, if we take a quick peek at the uh, NASDAQ uh, composite here, price oscillator down below the zero line, I am not sure what it's going to look like when it comes to uh, the 4 p.m. time frame. But uh, this fits in with what I have been looking for, which was the uh, market to make a, a short-term top today and uh, a short-term top and uh, see a couple of days where maybe it pulls back. Uh, maybe it trades sideways. I can't be certain about that out here. Um, but if uh, the NASDAQ composite were to finish this way, that would be really confirming its message to me as to what it wants to uh, do out there. 
that would really be uh, what I'm suggesting to you is setting up the next buying opportunity inside of the market. If I take a look at the uh, strong dog out here, that is the NQ. This is a 30-minute chart out here. Let me see what we uh, see. Um, oh, come on, go ahead and populate out here. No reversal signal uh, as of uh, yet as we speak. So still looks uh, relatively uh, bullish out here. That's on the 30-minute chart for the NQ. Let me go take a look at the 120-minute uh, time frame. Just looking for patterns where we have had reversals in the past. Well, you've got one that is showing up right now inside the uh, two-hour chart out here. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. The two-hour chart shows us with a uh, price relative strength divergent pattern. That means price has been moving higher, doing it with less relative strength out there, all the while being in that uh, seventh wave formation, potential seventh wave formation to the upside. Now, this is a two-hour chart. This uh, time frame that we're looking at, this one ends right now as we speak, another four minutes out here. So the earliest time frame where we could see some kind of reversal would have to be between two and four. And what I'm referring to there is a bearish reversal signal. And then we need to see another one at five Fifth at uh, 6 p.m. with uh, within that two-hour time frame. So 8 p.m. would be the first time we would see a signal, potential signal that would confirm what we're looking at as we take a look at the cash Nasdaq composite. Uh, if I take a look at the uh, five-hour energy chart out here, this is about as strong as you can get. There's nothing here that says that uh, we have any imminent uh, reversal uh, in play. That was the NQ. Uh, if I take a look at, you know, what has been weak, it's, why don't we take a look at the uh, Dow out here. Let me see if I can do this. So here's a 30-minute chart here for the uh, Dow. If I pull this back, you can see it's actually being, it's, it's still strong. Look, we're going to see higher highs inside the Dow. What I'm looking for here, I'm just searching for some intermediate term time frame, shorter term time frames, not intermediate term time frame, some shorter term time frame signals that would suggest that we might see a market stall or pull back. I didn't really see too much inside the 30-minute chart there for the Dow. If I look at the two-hour chart out here, this did have a price relative strength divergent top out here. This is the most consistent top and bottoming formation pattern once you learn it and understand how to trade it and where to go ahead and place stops. It is the one signal that called the top in 1929 as well as the bottoms and tops or the tops in 2000. 2007 and uh, 2000 and many others along the way out there. Uh, trust me, I have searched high and low for the most consistent patterns that would give us a signal whether you were looking at intraday charts, daily charts, weekly charts, and so forth out here. At this stage, we can see on the 120-minute chart out here, even though we had that reversal signal, actually this nice little move up, these four waves, the upside have occurred so quickly over a two-hour, you know, on a two-hour chart, that that's actually a bit of a signal that maybe we get one little punch higher and get a seventh wave move to the upside inside of the 120-minute chart there. So, a couple of signals, uh, and uh, the real confirming one looks like it would be inside the NASDAQ composite. So, folks, uh, stay tuned. Our man David White, he'll be up next. That squeezably lovable soft David White. I will go watch that four-hole playoff to see who is going to take home the Claret Jug. Have a great Monday, folks. Look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.